Um, I received an email from a listener named Brian. And Brian is very upset. And I want to see how many of you out there can relate to what Brian is saying or can fill us in or give us more information about this. Maybe some of you feel Brian's frustration. I mean, his email is all of seven lines. But he's pissed. See if you in any way know anything about this, if you can relate to it, or if you're angry like he is. Here it is. Just stopped at the coffee bean. By the way, for those of you who don't live in Southern California, the coffee bean and tea leaf predates Starbucks. It was our Starbucks before there was Starbucks. Been here forever, or at least since the 60s. 63, there you go. No, it's been a long time. Anyway, just stopped at the coffee bean on Spring Street and Palos Verdes Avenue in Long Beach. Usual five to eight moms blabbing on and on. I want to tell them, get a job. Go clean your house. Go cook dinner for your husband. All talking about themselves and their kids. No one mentions the husband who make it possible to stay home and drink that coffee with their friends. Then when he gets home, they'll be nagging him to do his share. F that. And he didn't say F. It's from Brian. Now I must say, uh, no matter where you go, whether it's Starbucks, the coffee bean, or... Depending where you live, Tully's or whatever, you know these places. You go in during the day, and there are women who clearly are mothers sitting there drinking coffee and blabbing. And usually they've just come from or they're on their way to the the nail salon and other uh, important errands they have to run during the day. I mean, certainly Brian is right that uh, you walk into one of these coffee joints, and that's what you see during the day. And um, I know there's a lot of men out there who are tired of being told they're not doing their fair share, they're not doing their half of the housework. Men who go out and work a full day and then come home and are told, you don't help out around here. I know some of you are angry, just like Brian is. Now, some of you may have a perspective on these women hanging out at the coffee shops. You could be... A customer. You could be one of the people standing behind them in line or sitting at the next table. You could be one of the people themselves. Maybe you are one of those moms hanging out, drinking coffee in the morning. You could be a barista. Another example of giving somebody a title so you don't have to give them a raise. I'm a barista. No, 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 I'm not a waitress. I'm a barista. (laughs) And I have a tip job. By the way, I went into a chicken wing place the other day. They had a a tip jar. Let me see. They put the wings in the hot sauce, and they stuck them in the tin, put some foil over it, and they handed it to me, and they deserve a tip for what exactly? clear on that but uh, you may be one of the people who has observed this behavior and maybe you're one of the people like Brad who is angry are you angry about this do you feel that women sit around and do nothing all day long and then when you come home from work they complain that you're not helping out around the house they tell you how hard they work all day You really can't check up on them if you're the husband, okay? Because you have to go to work. You can't roll home early and pass by the coffee bean and take a look in the window. 
So as far as you know, she's slaving over a hot stove. She's scrubbing the floor. She's doing the kids' laundry. Oh, she's busting her ass. You know, I've had a couple of these traditional relationships. I don't have a kid, but I had these traditional relationships where I said to somebody, look, I make more money than you could ever dream of, so why don't we do this? I'll go to work. You take care of the house. Okay? You don't have to work. All you have to do is take care of the house. And that sounds like a great deal in the beginning. But after a while, there they are at the coffee bean or getting their nails done or they're out to shopping at Nordstrom or whatever they do. And the only way you know this is if you pay close attention to your credit card bills because you see where the money's being spent. And they can tell you that they were slaving over a hot stove all day. But if all the charges are for stores at the Grove or the Beverly Center or, uh, you know, South Coast Plaza, you know damn well they were slaving over anything but a cash register. Spending your money. I imagine there's a lot of guys out there angry the way Brian is angry at what he saw. So if you're one of those guys or if you're one of the women he saw, the kind of women he saw. Maybe you were at that coffee bean. Who oh, no. knows? Uh, if you uh, are one of the people who looks over to the next table and you see women sitting there chattering away when they should be home doing something around the house. If you think I'm being unreasonable here, I really would love to know. Uh, All right, give us one more crack for the road here. Oh, let me pull my pants down. Okay. 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 Oh. That is red. Oh. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 500 tom Talking about those chicks who sit around the coffee bean or Starbucks all day long. Have their babies in tone. Patty on the Tom Likens show. Hello. Patty. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was. Hi. How are you? I, I'm okay. All, I love you. I love you. And you know what? You're absolutely right. First of all, I am one of those moms, so I have to admit, my friends and I will sit around after we drop the kids at school and have a cup of coffee or whatever. But I have to tell you that I'm one of those that when my husband comes home, the meal on the table, our house is clean. He has very few household obligations. I only expect him to spend time with our daughter, quality time with her, but he shouldn't be expected to do anything. He's the one out making the money right now. It's not fair otherwise. That's right. He does his job, and you have your jobs to do. Exactly. Before my daughter was born, I was a professional. I actually made more money than he did. And you know what? He had housework. He did laundry. He had his things to do. I have my things to do. But once I became a stay-at-home mom, the responsibility became mine to make sure that our home was taken care of. That's my job. So you're absolutely 100% right. Some of my friends don't agree or don't have that same philosophy, but I just wanted to let you know that you're right on this one. And every time you bring the subject up, I've always wanted to call because I think you are right. I don't always agree with you, but on this one, definitely. Thank you, Patty. You're very welcome, Tom. Appreciate the call. Here comes Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay. Here's a question for you. How old was Brian? Did it say his age in that email? He didn't say. That, it's incredible. How do you go through your entire life not realizing just how stupid chicks really are? Well, I'll tell you what you're saying is you think he was completely clueless about this, so that's why he's so angry. No, yeah, he should have known this years ago. Probably when he was like six. <laughs> like, what, like, like, when's the last time you had a conversation with a chick and we're trying to score and then walked away and said, you know what, that was really good. I really respected her opinion on something. That's rare. Happens. Usually they're fat or fugly. <laughs> and even then, do you really want to look at them? I mean, the best of both worlds is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm surprised you waited this long to figure that out, and then got somebody had to write an email about it. <laughs> Carl in Portland, Oregon, over the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. That happened happened to me today. Nice little cafe I go to and took a co-worker to, maybe 15 tables in there. Two girls in their 20s, he's got a crumb cruncher with him. The kids are crying and, you know, throwing food around. You're wondering, what in the hell are these kids doing in there? And these women, what are they doing? You know, how come they're not home? Why do they bring those kids out to that nice place like that? And uh, no doubt they're going to come home and tell their husband, you don't help me around the house. You don't do anything. 
<laughs> no, it was crazy. Hey, Tom, I want to tell you, my boy, I got both my sons listening to you. They're in their 30s, and I got my grandson listening to you. He's 12. I love it. <laughs> can you take me out of old school, Tom? You know I can. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, you hit me in the gut on this one. I have a wife that does this every day after, you know, when school starts and she goes with all the yentas and all they do is sit there and just talk mad mess about their husbands. It's brutal. How do you feel about it? Well, she's a good wife and she takes care of the house, but the things she tells me about the other girls when she comes home kills me. And what's worse than that, it may be another topic, is the metrosexual dudes that sit there and try to hit on them while they're all talking smack about their husbands. <laughs> those those guys are the worst. That those are the guys. Topic. Those are the guys who hang out at Starbucks. Exactly. Those are the guys. You ever hear them talk about st the Starbucks experience? And exactly. it's not just a coffee; it's a way of life. You come in and you escape from the world, and you sit. What is it? It's some space in a storefront somewhere. In yeah, a strip I don't know. Mall. They, they just say my husband's such a jerk, and they go, "Yeah, I totally agree." Yeah, that while they're sitting home because he's working. And paying the bills and paying for that five dollar cup of coffee. Exactly. Not cool. I'm with you on this one, Tom. You blow me up, JFK Jr. JFK Jr. style. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Marie, on the Tom Like um, show. Hello. So I used to, I was a part-time nanny for this woman once, and she'd have me go in after her husband would go to work because he didn't know that I was her part-time nanny. So what she'd do was, and as soon as I walked into the house, she'd take off to Starbucks for like an hour, hour and a half, and then she'd come back and, you know, like tell me about like all her friends and the way they raise their kids and just like all this gossip. And then she'd have me go uh, drop off the kids at daycare and like help her clean up the house. And when she talked to her husband on the phone, she wait was a minute, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. She hired you. She hired a nanny and then she sent the kids yep. to daycare. And then she, yeah. And then that's the thing. She wouldn't even take care of the kids and she called herself a housewife. And I was like, okay, so what does she really do besides go get her nails done, go to Pilates, go to Starbucks and then she'd tell her husband, I'd hear her on the phone, oh, honey, I'm so stressed. It was such a stressful day, and I was running errands all day. And, you know, like, I wouldn't say anything, but I was just like, oh, my God, this lady's pretty pathetic. And she'd do it again, and she'd say, okay, it's almost lunchtime. I have to go meet the girls again. You know, and then she'd have me leave before her husband showed up. So it was just, like, crazy. She called herself a housewife, yet she never did anything around the house. Not to mention yeah. the fact, I guarantee you, when the husband came home, she could please clean my room and have this nice and have like that. And, you know, like, but, you know, and she'd tell her husband, oh, I'm so tired. And uh, um, it was such a stressful day. And I was just thinking, like, all she does is sit at Starbucks and gossip. And then she'd tell me about, like, the cute workers there. And, oh, he had such a cute butt. And, you know, and I was just like, okay. My mom was a housewife. My mom was, you know, she cooked and she cleaned and she did errands and she'd take us to school and pick us up and help us with our homework. And, you know, my mom was a real housewife, and I just think, like, these women that call themselves housewives that sit at Starbucks all day or, you know, go to their little yoga class or go to their nails, like, they should have a different name for them. They need to find something else to call themselves not housewives. Le let's call them what they are, legal whores. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'm sorry. I mean, as a woman, I was just like, I was ashamed. I was like, you don't, how dare you call yourself a housewife? You know, I was like, that's, that's so, I mean, I, to me, she was just like a freeloading, lazy wo woman. And, you know? and let me guess, as a young woman, a nanny mm -hmm. still making your way to a career or whatever That's you're going to cool. do. Uh -huh. I'll bet you sometimes thought to yourself, I'd love to have somebody like that who goes to work all day and makes the money and comes home and I don't have to go to the office. Yeah, I mean, I would tell my friends, like, oh, my God, this girl is living, like, the life. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, how cool it must be to just hire somebody to do everything for you and just chill and waste your time at the coffee shop and go out with your friends and get your nails done and then complain to your husband, oh, honey, I'm so stressed. I need you to buy me something, you know, like, to relieve my stress. I need you to take me shopping. And, you know, I tell my friends, we joke around. I'd be like, man, these ladies are so pathetic. Like, but how must be, you know, but... 
I mean, honestly, I just think, like, man, here I am working my butt off, you know, like, working two jobs, going to school, and these girls, you know, are just, like, freeloading, lazy, and they hire nannies and they hire housekeepers to do the things for them, yet they call themselves housewives. And all they do is sit around Starbucks all day. I mean, it does make me mad. And this guy's right. He has every right to be mad. I totally understand. Pat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. My savior, Tom. It's yes. a pleasure to talk to you. I'm sure. <laughs> Man, I'm going through divorce right now for the very same thing that we're talking about. Really? Am, Tell us about it. Uh, every, every day on the way to work, Tom, I stop at Starbucks, and I see women in there in sweatsuits and stuff like that. They're, you know they're not dressed for work. You know, and I go home to, and I come home from work, and it's my old lady doing the same thing to me, telling me what I'm not doing, why she don't work, and I pull all the weight and pay all the bills. I'm tired of it. I filed papers on her. I'm in the process of going through divorce right now. And she's probably trying to get lots of money out of you on the way out. She is. Tom, she's gonna hit me for about nine twenty-two. Nine dollars no, no, just a, a month in child support, and then oh. I got five fifty in alimony on top of that. Oh, Jesus! Yep, yep. That but, sucks. Yeah, it does. It hurts too financially. It hurts bad. All you guys listen, Tom. Oh man, I wish I would have listened to you a long time ago. I'd have never been in this situation. You guys listen, Tom's a man. Just say no to marriage. <laughs> Can you take me out the bong here, Tom? Here you go, Pat. <coughs> Maria on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, Hi, Maria. Just a, a listener, and I agree with you, Happy Bean. I'm a, um, I work, and I also, when I get home, I cook dinner for my husband, and dinner's ready when he gets home. And like that other li um, listener said, the caller, she said that um, all she wants is for her husband to help out with the with the kids. And that's all I asked my husband, too, to help me out with the baby. But everything else is ready for him. And um, I don't use my uh, credit cards or ATM. My husband has me on an allowance, and I'm okay with that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. And that's why I can't stand those women who are housewives and are out there. And like that guy said, with their sweatsuits and with their hair all done, and out there just having a great old time while, you know, people like us, like me, who are working and then have to get home and cook dinner for their husbands. I don't mind, though, as long as I keep him satisfied and he keeps me satisfied. That's great. Sounds good to me. <laughs> can you but... hit me with the, uh, uh, can I get a bong hit, please? Yes, of course you can. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Mario on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you doing today? Doing okay. Great. Uh, it is an honor to talk to you. I've been listening to you since I was 13 when my mom got me into you. I love that. <laughs> I'm also a single parent, and she got me into you. Uh, I love <laughs> it, <too. laughs> Anyways, going to what we were talking about here, this is basically the reason why I am not getting married. <laughs> This and also the, what you always talk about, about the uh, alimony, the child, the, too much BS. Too much arguing, too many things to argue about. Exactly. <laughs> well, what I was telling Dean about was, uh, was yeah, that I'm in sales and uh, I always go all over the place and I usually eat all over the place. And one example that I want to give is I was at Sioux Plantation. That was me and another friend of mine that we do the same thing. We work in sales and we want to go eat. And there was like maybe four or five women, you know, they're like 30. All of them are good looking. And they all were just there for like an hour or two, just eating and eating and, and just talking about themselves, talking about their husbands, just like you said right now. So I agree with that, with uh, Brian, the guy with the coffee bean letter. I mean, that's what they do all, all day long. It's. Ah, and there's a guy whatever. paying for it. That's the thing. Exactly. That husband that they're, that they're dissing there, that's the guy making it all possible. Yeah, it it it, it 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 pisses me off knowing how hard my mom works, how hard because she raised me and she's the one that you know works and got us to where we live. I mean, she lives in Redondo Beach. She did real good for herself. She Absolutely, studied, she studied hard. She she did good. And all these girls, I got 
that basically got lucky, if you want to call it, and got lucky and got with an idiot who pays for everything. You know what I mean? And these guys are idiots to be paid. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just it just mind boggles me uh, how how these guys would do that. I mean that's I mean I'm a one on one listener. Like it's one on one, and that's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> that well, won't could, happen. I'm Mario. I'm proud of you, and I thank you for the call. This is Greg on the Tom Likett Show. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Great. Great. Hey, last time I spoke to you, you were on the AM dial, and your finishing comment to me was, "Watch out, something big is about to happen." And, and it did. Man, Oh, it did, Tom. Congratulations. You're doing great. Thank you. Hey, uh, I do not go to Starbucks anymore. About three or four months ago, you were talking about $5 for a cup of coffee. I did it constantly. You woke me up. I do not do that anymore. Completely ridiculous to pay that amount of money. And even though you guys did just run a commercial for Starbucks, I have to say that. Final comment. Yes. The final thing i got to say is my wife makes about 65000 She's a teacher. I'm a cook. I make about 50000 I am on my way home to do the vacuum in my house. I enjoy vacuuming. Is there a problem with that? If you enjoy vacuuming, no. Do whatever you want. But yeah. uh, when they start making demands and they start complaining that you're not doing your part, outrageous. Absolutely. She, uh, we uh, work together. You know, it's, it's, uh, We kind of divide the chores. But... Uh, I think that's the way it should be. I mean, uh, she works, I work. Uh, we both have to uh, contribute to the household. and uh, that's Well, I... you know, the thing is, when, you, when you're with a woman, you end up having, uh, be, having to be told by her what to do and when to do it. I don't like it. Uh, I live alone. Everything gets done. Garbage gets taken out. The house is taken care of. Uh, I don't need anyone here telling me when to do things or what to do or what my jobs are. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I, like be, I don't like being told. I think I may have got lucky and I won the lottery with the lady I have because she doesn't do that, and uh, we mesh pretty good and uh, we work to, we work together really good, you know. So. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, Greg, thank you for that. Robert, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing today? I'm okay. Hey, I uh, just uh, wanted to call in and give my comments. I'm a 34 year old. I uh, live down in Huntington Beach, which has nothing but these women hanging out at all the coffee shops down here. And it's insane. I, I do outside sales, so I'm out in the field a lot. And, you know, every time I stop in for a meeting with someone at a coffee shop or I stop in to get a cup, uh, they're there all day. No matter what time of day you're there, what time of what you're doing, what day it is, they're always there. It's it's just crazy. How do you feel about it? Ah, Well, I tell you what, I'm 34 years old, never been married, never plan on being married. My dad was married twice to two horrible women. And uh, and had a horrible relationships both times. He he tells me all the time, save yourself the drama and the uh, financial burden, and just you know find some tail and uh, and keep moving along. Everybody else will take care of uh, providing the human race for us. We just need to make as much money as we can and and uh, be strong men. You are right about that, Robert. Thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Simple letter I received from a listener named Brian, in case you're just tuning in. Here's what we're talking about, in case you're just joining us here. He wrote to say, just stopped at the Coffee Bean on Spring Street and Palos Verdes Avenue in Long Beach. Usual five to eight moms blabbing on and on. I want to tell them, get a job. Go clean your house. Go cook dinner for your husband. All talking about themselves and their kids. No one mentions the husbands who make it possible to stay home and drink coffee with the friends. When he gets home, they'll want him to do his share. F that. Can you relate to this letter? You call me and tell me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Your listeners are like the stupidest people I've ever heard in my life. Well, By the way, attention advertisers, you too can reach this prime demographic. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Elise on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. 
How, how's your night going? How's it going, Tom? Great. Are you busy over there? No, no, no. Sorry, I just I didn't realize that I that I I got put back on uh, from hold. But um, anyways, I was gonna say that uh, I w- I just happened to tune into your station, and I I've worked at Starbucks for uh, going on three years now, and uh, these women that you guys are, I just I couldn't, you know, I kind of got a laugh up out of it because um, you know, working there you get a whole different, uh, you know, a whole different ex- well, a different experience as far as the different type of people that you come across, and you know, and everybody's right. There's you know, at least a handful, multiple handfuls of these women every day who order, you know, their quad upside down venti, one and a half Splenda, stirred, complicated drinks, you know, and then they'll just go, they'll all go sit in the corner, um, you know, and and being that we have to, you know, clean up the, the store and everything during busy rushes and everything, you kind of, you hear different conversations and, um, and it is, you know, I, I, I think about it in my head as far as just like, wow, you know, what are those women doing today besides coming here at Starbucks, um, talking about, you know, same type of stuff everybody everybody stereotypes it as, and you know, and then they get to leave in their BMW and and uh, probably I don't know go get their nails done and that whole lifestyle. I just think that um, um, I'm, I mean I'm curious, I guess, for someone to. Uh, you know, one of these one of these women to just call in and kind of have a def- have a defense for um, what exactly they do in a day. You know, there's a you know I, I so far I've I've heard a lot of callers who look at it almost as um as spiteful. You know that here here are, is this lifestyle that people have this Starbucks experience. You know, like you said, and then there's um you know the other the other the other working class, the people that actually do have to balance um you know. Working two jobs, going to school. Um, what are working class people doing at Starbucks? Exactly, you know, I've wondered that too. How how people who, you know, because we open our store opens at you know four thirty in the morning, and there's people who do you know construction or just people that come up in their truck, and we know their drink, but they're there every day. And I'm thinking, is it really that important to buy? You know, even for just a regular cup of coffee, it's it's you know two dollars. And it goes up, you know, every six months, and uh, you know, just for a cup of coffee. And I work there now, you know. I, I guess I take advantage of, yeah, we can drink whatever we want, like any time we want, pretty much. But, um, you know, somehow when you think of Starbucks in general, you think it's one of the biggest corporations. I mean, big, as far as corporate goes, there's, I mean, there's one literally almost every block it seems like now, and every one you walk into, there's always a, a line, you know, in the morning or the drive-through is out into the parking lot and. No matter how many you build, there's always just more people that... Well, that's been true, but there was a story in the Wall Street Journal today that says that for the first time, the uh, the, the the phenomenon of Starbucks may be uh, finally fizzling out. Uh, it's the first time they have not shown growth in a quarter. Oh, wow. And well, you know, and, ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's... I mean, I don't really... I mean, that's actually pretty... I mean, that's interesting. I mean, from... At least from, because I've been to different Starbucks as far as just working at different stores, and you know they just introduced that whole thing as far as the warming, uh, you know, bringing food into the pictures. So now it's now not just a coffee house. Now it's it's a coffee house and you know breakfast and lunch and uh, and pastries. You know everybody that I work with, we kind of joke around like, oh, pretty soon it's just going to be something like Club Starbucks. You know, it's just gonna it's going to be no, it's going to be the Starbucks Hotel and Casino. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's almost just like they're... Starbucks apartments. Yeah, Starbucks apartments, exactly. I mean, they have Starbucks alcohol, and, we're, and we joke about how one of these days, you know, Starbucks is going to close down at midnight, and then from midnight to 4 a.m., it's going to be Club Starbucks. <laughs> baristas just, you know, strip off all their clothes, and it's it's now, you know, hot baristas uh, pouring <laughs> drinks. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And then, you know, at 4 a.m., it switches back over to the coffee house. and everybody Get that else, Howard you know, Schultz on the phone. Get him on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a million-dollar idea. But, I mean, just in think, um, I think uh, women who, who, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe that group, the group of people that we're targeting right now, they're not even listening right now. But I think, um, you know, I don't want to judge. Maybe you figure, okay, maybe they a harsh, a harsh day, you know, as far as they have to. I judge for a living. I love to judge. <laughs> I love okay. it. 
But I mean, for uh, them to at least be up by eight o'clock, you know, and actually, yes, gym, there you go. <laughs> you got to give them credit for that, I guess. That's exactly right. But at the same time, um, what else do they have to do with their day? It seems besides. Uh, complain to their husbands that they don't do enough around the house. I'm sure that's coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just I think it's just very superficial. These, these you know, they're they're obviously. Oh, we, we lost you right there. Okay, Maria, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Maria. Uh, hey, um, first of all, I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today. Because um, years ago I thought you were the seed of Satan, and uh, and I've come around. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Uh, I don't agree with everything, but um, but uh, I think you're definitely uh, on target on a lot of things. And uh, anyways, I'm calling in because um, I'm a mommy and uh, I work full time. I'm a lawyer, and I um, I seem to have dinner ready every night, and my house is looking okay. And uh, things are in order. And Being the welfare department, okay? And yeah. I'm done uh, paying for all that stuff. I, I just don't where where they get that sense of entitlement. I'm not sure where it comes from. I don't know if guys per, have perpetuated throughout the years with this whole needing to be a gentleman. And, uh, and obviously that has backfired. I think your show kind of speaks to that, that it ends up backfiring when you try to be a gentleman. Um, but uh, it's it's sad. And uh, I, I just, I mean... I, these women got to understand uh, if if they don't like their situation because of the financial circumstances and they're not doing anything about it because they're not working and they get divorced, I just don't see how they think, you know, they're going to better their lives. I just, I, I, I don't get it. This becomes a vicious cycle and, uh, you know, it's just, it's gross. But it's more irritating than anything because I work and I, man and I manage to still have a normal uh, household life and, you know, it's possible and it's doable, so I just don't get it. Thank you, Maria. Hey, I appreciate I appreciate you bringing up this topic. It's very interesting, and um, and uh, congratulations on the ratings. Why? Thank you, Corey, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I just want to hail you. I think you are a king amongst men. You are, have changed my life in in so many ways I can't even explain. And uh, you know, I I used to be Dino's old roommate from years and years ago, and it's it's. It's been a rebirth for me, and I want to say hello. And uh, I live in Manhattan Beach on the Strand. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I live in Manhattan Beach. I call it on Miller's Row uh, on the Strand. And there's a lot of very high-end trophy wives everywhere. And that, that's the thing about living down there. You'd think it'd be, you know, stocked with hot babes, but the only women who can afford to live here are kept women. And, you know, I work from home a lot of times, so I'll go to walk my dog up down, you know, the hill to where there's a Starbucks and a peach coffee and tea. And it's just hot trophy wives, like, in their dumb sweatsuits, you know, hanging out, uh, just going to the nail salon, just going to Nordstrom's, just doing something, eating in restaurants with their friends, paying for it on their husband's tab. And one of my uh, neighbors, I'm not going to say who, but she's a really beautiful trophy wife who's on a professional hockey team, and she comes up to me, and I, I have to say I am a devout like it follower till I die. And she says to me, when are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? And I looked at her, I said, honey, I'm never going to get married, and I don't want any kids. And <laughs> she looked at me like I would, like had three eyes. And, you know, I have to say that. When I moved here like 10 years ago to L.A., I got my lunch eaten for me. I, it was a piranha fest. I was living on the floor with Dino and three other guys in a shack in Redondo Beach. And now I'm on track to becoming extremely wealthy. Um, and life is just grand. And I tell you, I, I'll tell you what my space is good for. It's good for looking at the girls who dumped you and dissed you 10 years ago and seeing what they look like now. <laughs> You are my father. Can you please take now with a bong hit and thank you, Jesus? You know I can. Thank you, Jesus. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> How are you? Great, Tom. Shortest call of the week. How 
How bad is that? You're calling me Jennifer now. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, Father Tom. Tim. you got to help us. Help us. God help us. That I go to Starbucks every morning with my workers, and I'm in Huntington Beach, and the stuff we have to just, I mean, the line, right as we're going through the line, you think people just be in there to get their coffee, get out? No. you got all the moms in there with their crumb crunchers, and, and the kids are whining, and it's just going on and on, and they do nothing. And then they go out, they get in their nice 940 or whatever Mercedes drive off, and it's just, it's bizarre. And you just wonder what's going on. Wow. That's just, that's something we have to deal with every day. And it's funny because we'll go to the the, the coffee bean as well, and, you know, some days on the other side of town, same exact thing. They're dressing the, the, the sweatsuits, and, and they're just hanging out. And you're like, what's going on? How is stuff getting done if you're you know, here and uh, not at your house taking care of business? The way it gets done is they nag their husbands when they get home. You don't do anything around here. I have to do all the work around here. <laughs> you know what? Thank God my wife, she doesn't like coffee at all. And, I mean, she's way better than that anyways. But, I mean, still, I just I, if my wife ever did anything like that, that'd be it. I'd be a, I'd be a free man, Tom. Bet. All I all I gotta say is is just, you know, keep up the good work. I love the ratings. I love everything that's going on in your show. And if you could please take me out Columbine style, that would be tasteless too. But uh, what can I do? Oh, Col- Columbine style is a, g- a gunshot. Art's never done Columbine style before. There it is. Yeah, that's. Even better. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, Roland on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it's wonderful to talk to you. I'm a big fan. Thank you. And um, I'd also like to say that your show is very, very popular in the county jail and the Twin Towers and at um, Supermax. I'm glad to hear that. By the way, attention advertisers, you know the deal. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm having a situation with the wife, and um, when we first got together, it was like I like to come in and clean up, and I, I like to redecorate the oh, house. No doubt she's made you miserable, right? The Tom Likas Show.